hip-hop gang was popping. My pop gang at, man. Olo the Dawn was popping, my broski. It was really good. It was popping. What up, what up, what up, what up, what up? Alberto Cabrera, what up? J.O., what up? Ultra was populating. Jorge was really good. A.D. Jackson, I'm saying though, what up? Louis V was popping. Goldie, what up? Skrilla Ski, Danny T was popping. I see y'all in the building. I see them gen pop flags. I see dudes flagging that good gen pop. Oh, man, it's cold out here, man. Word the mother, Dollar Bill Will, what up? QE, what up? Ninth Power, what's good? It's cold. What's good, my broskies? How y'all liking that new content that's up? I know I got a new episode dropping tomorrow. You heard I got a new episode dropping tomorrow at 7 a.m. If y'all want to, y'all could go comment gang that out tonight. So that YouTube will have that algorithm nice and chunky. So when it drops in the morning, it go viral. You heard? A lot of people don't know that. If you get those comments before the video drop, when it's when it's at a premiere, if five, six motherfuckers go comment on that shit, YouTube gonna make sure they release that nice. Because if five, six, seven people comment on it before it even comes out, then, you know, imagine what they gonna do when it drops. Fetra Lynn Hall was popping. Free Shorty Mike for a fact. Max 06, what up? Max G, rather, 06 was populating my broski. Yeah, my nigga. Nas Boulevard was populating. But yeah, my nigga. We gotta get my. We gotta push that free. What we gotta push that free Shorty Mike, my nigga. We ain't standing gem pop. We ain't standing for nobody illegally sentenced, bro. I don't care what their crime is. Know what I mean? If they ain't motherfucking rape and kill a kid, they wasn't raping kids and shit, we helping them niggas get the fuck out the pen because in New York, the most they could sentence a person under the age of 16 to is nine to life, which is a whole lot of time also. But with nine to life, after they hit you at the ball four or five times, they got they gonna let you go, my nigga. You understand what I'm saying? So you might do 15, 16 off that nine of life, but you gonna come home. You ain't gonna do no motherfucking 20 and 30 years. You ain't gonna do no 27, 28, 30 years and all of that. Like they trying to make son do so. You understand what I'm saying? We ain't we ain't we ain't we ain't holding down no 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 illegal sentences over here, my nigga. We gonna make noise about it. You heard? YMF link peace, peace to the guard, talking hip hop peace. Shay Davis know what it is, man. If Shay Davis wanna come on the channel, he's more than welcome to come on the channel. So if any of y'all niggas know Shay Davis, know what I mean? Tell son if he got any type of jail stories you wanna tell. The channel is an open lane for everybody, my nigga. If you was locked up and you got a wild motherfucking story. The channel is yours, it ain't just mine. This channel is a lane for motherfuckers to get shit off their chest, my nigga. This shit is therapy for niggas, you know what I'm saying? This shit is therapy for niggas, and I ain't gonna never deny a nigga that therapy, because this shit was therapy for me, my nigga. Like, when I did this channel, I talked about a lot of shit that I ain't never really talk about publicly. You feel what I'm saying? Like, you know what I mean? Nigga ain't wanna tell niggas how niggas robbed me and all of that shit. You know what I mean? Took my shit and all of that. And I had to get it on and all of that. Get my shit back and all of that. I ain't wanna tell niggas these stories and all of that. Shit, some of them shits is, you know what I mean? Them shits is having niggas stressing. But when I got it off my chest, shit felt great. So when I tell a story about my case and how I caught my case and was 
charged with murder in the second degree and criminal possession of a firearm and was facing 27 to life and all of that. You understand what I'm saying? At the, age, the, the right age of 16, I was facing 25 to life and he was offering me that 15-year cop out. You know what I mean? When I get that shit off my chest, how I caught my case and I explained my shit to the world because you know, you got a lot of niggas that grew up with me in Brownsville. Shockingly, they don't know the de details of my case and they actually think that I did some real foul, violent shit. And you know, sound travels at 1,120 1, feet per second, man. So dudes be getting rumors fucked up. I came home from the can. It's niggas who I thought knew the intri intricacies of my case. They ain't know shit about my case. He's like, yo son, how that shit? I'm like, what? Y'all niggas been in the street all these years and y'all ain't get the story yet? You feel me? So I can't wait to tell the story of my case and my life. It's going to be rough. I'm going to let y'all niggas know. I'm going to tell y'all niggas now. Don't, don't. Be prepared. Be prepared to be shocked. And be prepared to be fucked up after you hear all of the shit that a nigga been through and all of the shit that I put others, others through with this crime. I can't really even consider it a crime because it was an accidental shooting. You understand what I'm saying? But... You know, I still was in possession of a legal, uh, of an illegal firearm, and I still was a, a, a young, stupid nigga running around with Mac 11s and Tech 9s and doing dumb shit. You feel what I'm saying? So I bought this shit on myself, my nigga. So when I tell this case and I tell this story, get ready for a ride, my nigga, because it's a ride. You heard Slim Blunt Gang in the building. What's really good? even know what the hell this is i'm smoking work hard was populating terry brennan was popping i heard killer kev is locked up i'm not sure how true that is but killer kev know this channel was an open lane if you want to come on the channel and talk about anything you can come on the channel too pj hoodie but yeah i want to let that be known man know what i mean i want to let that be known too my nigga like Killer Cost OZ Beast was populating, my nigga. Like, this channel, let me tell you something. You know, a lot of niggas know me from the rap shit. You feel me? A lot of other rapper niggas that was locked up in jail, shit like that. You know, you know, you know how rappers' egos be. Niggas be like, oh, I ain't gonna be asking that nigga for shit. He another rapper. But for the record, my nigga, like, this shit right here, this shit is therapy for the streets, my nigga. You understand what I'm saying? This shit is therapy for the streets. So any motherfucker who really got a jail story to tell, a life story to tell, and want to come on the channel, this shit is an open lane, my nigga. I want niggas to come on the channel. I want all rappers to come on the channel. I want all motherfuckers to come on the channel. You understand what I'm saying? So so, so they could tell the world the type of shit that we have been through, my nigga. You know what I mean? Type of shit black motherfuckers go through, my nigga. Fuck we doing being 16 years old sentenced to 35 years and shit like that like come on my nigga that shit could have been me you heard if i would have took my case to trial in blue i could have got i could have got 30 years and in new york you doing a hundred percent of that shit well now the, now you do 85 percent. but when i was doing my time it wasn't no 85 percent, my nigga you heard it was 105 percent if they could make it that you heard now they made it you do 85 percent of your time in new york that's some new shit i'm half puerto rican and half black my nigga my father is puerto rican full-blooded 100 percent puerto rican my mom's is black from williamsburg projects you feel what i'm saying my pops is a puerto rican from motherfucking manhattan you heard so I'm black and Puerto Rican, my nigga, which is, in my book, is just black. So I got all of that. I got that Puerto Rican in me, my nigga. You know what I mean? My aunts, my aunts. See, my pops, my pops is full-blooded Puerto Rican, but all his brothers and sisters is half Puerto Rican, half Italian. And an Italian dude raised my pops, you feel what I'm saying? Mob dude and all of that. Son was in the mob and all of that. 
You understand what I'm saying? So he raised them niggas like Italians, you heard? But my pops was the only one that came straight from Puerto Rico when he was like one years old. Know what I mean? So, yeah. Nigga half black, half Puerto Rican. So, you know, I don't speak no Spanish though. So, you know, niggas don't really be fucking with me. Spanish chicks don't really be fucking with me because I don't speak no Spanish. Yeah, bro. That's New York for you though, my nigga. There's a lot of blacks and Puerto Ricans mixed up in New York, my nigga. Know what I mean? Glocky Picasso was populating. Sean Penn, what up? Set the Viking was really good. Yeah, bro. My pop's last name is Rosa, you heard? But my last name, I got my mom's last name. My mom's last name is Johnston. My mom's a regular black motherfucker from Williamsburg Projects. Williamsburg Projects is the first projects built in New York City. For a fact. So my family comes from Williamsburg Projects. Then they started migrating. My aunt, one of my aunts moved to Marcy. One of my aunts moved to motherfucker Roberto Clemente. My mom's moved to Park Slope in Brownsville. You heard? My uncle moved to motherfucking um, Lindsay. You know what I mean? My family spread out all over Brooklyn, my nigga. You ain't gonna really run into see. Brooklyn is a small place. Everybody's really related in Brooklyn on the low. Like, you know what I mean? Niggas be killing each other and all of that. Then they find out they related. Like, everybody in fucking Brooklyn is six degrees of separation, my nigga. That's why you got to be careful in Brooklyn because everybody's related, my nigga. I got family all over Brooklyn. Anywhere you go, any part of Brooklyn, I got family there, my nigga. And that's a fact. I'm talking about Coney Island. I'm talking about Crown Heights. I'm talking about Bed-Stuy, Brownsville, East New York. Any fucking where you go in New York City, I got in Brooklyn, I got family there, bro. And that's a fact. Everybody in Brooklyn is connected. It ain't no real separation in Brooklyn, bro. I mean, you may not know me, but it's two niggas that I know that you know, that you related to. You heard? So in Brooklyn, you can't be beefing amongst Brooklyn niggas. I don't be doing that shit like on, online beefing with Brooklyn niggas and all of that because I know goddamn well, if you from Brooklyn, my nigga, you know my family. You heard? All my cousins... My cousin T-Roy, that live in a star, my son from Bushwick, my cousin, you know what I mean, that live in a star. If you don't know my cousin T-Roy, you know my cousin Slave. You heard? If you don't know my cousin Slave, you know my cousin Dark. If you don't know my male cousins, you know all my female cousins. You heard? Nigga, we spread out. Then we then we uptown too, my nigga. Then we uptown too. Then you already know. Dykeman is my second hood. So I know the whole Dykeman. Coming back to my car because I left my motherfucking phone in this car somewhere. I don't even know how I did that. Oh, here we go. I don't know how the fuck I did that. Let me see how much percentage I got on this phone now. I got to sit in the car and show us this shit. So this shit going to die. I don't want to die on live. I'm always dying on live on y'all niggas. Oh. But yeah, man. Then my uptown game. Forget about it. Then I was locked up with a million niggas. So if I don't know a nigga from the streets, I know a nigga from the pen. You heard? And I was like eight different jails, so... I know a lot of motherfuckers, you know what I mean? But, um, yeah, man, I don't feel like sitting in this car and 30 niggas come up to me asking me if I'm moving because I'm not moving, my nigga. I'm not moving, bro. I'm charging my phone. Let me put it alone. When I say up north, I'm talking about, I'm talking about New York jails, my nigga. 
I'm talking about New York jails up north. You know, in, in, in New York, when you get locked up, they just send you up north. They send you north to New York State. You feel me? And they do that in mostly in mostly every state, I think. Like, if you from Pittsburgh and you get you catch a case, they're going to send you to PA jails in the state of PA. But in New York, we call it up north because it's actually going up north towards Canada, upstate New York. So, you know what I mean? We call that shit up north. But, um... Yeah, my nigga. It ain't no state jails in the city. You feel what I'm saying? Unless they work release or some shit like that. But all the jails is upstate New York. And I told y'all niggas the science behind that, my nigga. Like, when they lock niggas up and they put niggas in a jail, let's say a jail like Green got that whole 1,600 motherfuckers or some shit. They put 1,600 motherfuckers in Kaksaki, New York. Guess what? The city of Kaksaki, New York, claims those 1,600 motherfuckers as dependents. So they get funding from the U.S. government and the state for housing those 1,600 inmates in their town of Kaksaki, New York. So basically, not only are you doing jail time, but the motherfuckers that live in that city is claiming you as a dependent and making money, getting a tax return from you, nigga. And they get a chunky tax return per inmate. You heard? So they're claiming you as a dependent. Anytime you get locked up, you're getting hustled on 30 levels, my nigga. You heard? They're claiming you as a dependent. Oh, word? Y'all got a facility where y'all house 2,000 inmates? Okay, well, two, that's 2,000 dependents of the city of Kaksaki. So when federal tax time comes around, them niggas is getting money for keeping you locked up, my nigga. So do you really think they don't want those jails filled? Do you really think they don't want niggas locked up when they could foul, you, foul for you as a dependent every year? Nah, nigga, they want you there, nigga. In fact, private prisons, they sue their stockholders when jails are not full. If they got a jail where the capacity is 2,000 and they only housing 1,500 inmates, they stockholders sue. So that they can make sure they keep them fucking facilities filled so that they can make more money, the stockholders. You feel what I'm saying? So, bro, this shit is a big hustle, my nigga. It ain't nothing coincidental or accidental, my nigga. You heard? It ain't nothing coincidental or accidental, my nigga. They lock your ass up. They send you, the, even the court system, everybody's hustling you, my nigga. The judge get a check every time he comes to fucking work to, to do your case. The, the court-appointed lawyer... They get a check every time you, every time they see your case. The district attorney, they get a check. My nigga, the bailiff get a check for having to be there all day because niggas keep coming to jail. So the court systems, the motherfucking jail systems, the state jails, the federal jails, they all depend on you going to jail, my nigga. They bank on you going to jail. They like, yo, if these niggas keep coming to jail, we gonna keep million, making millions of motherfucking dollars. That's the bottom motherfucking line, my nigga. You understand what I'm saying? Everybody gets paid, nigga. The COs, the motherfucking the construction workers who build the prisons. You understand what I'm saying? The motherfucking telephone companies who supply the, 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 the jails with collect calls. The commissary that be outside vendors that they, they rent space in the jail to sell their goods to inmates. Everybody eats off of the inmates, my nigga. The doctors, oh word, we got five million, they got 500,000 sick inmates per year. We get to prescribe them niggas medication and the government pays for it. You feel what I'm saying? So basically, they writing scripts all day to inmates because they getting federal funding for that shit, my nigga. You heard? They getting federal funding. Then they, then they throwing you in spots that make license plates. And soap and shit like that. And they getting cheap labor. They paying you a dollar a motherfucking day. When in the streets, they will be paying somebody $15 an hour. They paying you a dollar a day. You busting your ass in the state shop, making soap and motherfucking license plates for the motherfucking system. You understand what I'm saying? You, you making all the license plates for the DMV. Them niggas is saving motherfucking millions and millions of dollars in, in, in cheap labor fucking with you. You understand what I'm saying? So basically, when, you, when you're locked up, you are literally a slave. You're an indentured servant. It tells you that in the Constitution. 
All men are free except for those who commit a felony. You are not free anymore. You're an indentured servant and you have the right to enslave you and make you work like a slave, my nigga. And that's a fact. So when you loot, when you catch a felony and you're in the custody of the state or the federal federal prison system, bro, you don't have rights anymore. You're a fucking slave. You have human rights where niggas can't kill you and starve you. But as far as uh constitutional rights you don't have that anymore once you commit a felony and that's what a lot of niggas don't know you know what i mean so it's fucking crazy out here and slavery is is not only alive and well it's well it's better structured and it's 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 more intricate and scientific now so now they don't gotta whip you and beat you and shit like that my nigga all they gotta do is throw you in poverty my nigga and you're gonna sign up for indentured servant you're gonna sign up to be so don't think when you get locked up they like oh we just want to house you to punish you for five years till you learn your lesson no you committed a crime we're gonna make money off of you for five years you're gonna work for cheap we're gonna claim you on taxes we're gonna we're gonna give all uh, medical insurance money out you and everything my nigga so you're a cash cow you become a cash cow when you go to jail, you're like, okay, here goes another, you're cattle, my nigga. You're a cow, you're going in the motherfucking assembly line, we're gonna milk you, we're gonna get your milk, the cheese, the butter, and then when we finish with that, we're gonna kill you and get the beef, my nigga. Then when that's over, we're gonna use your skin and make leather out your ass. You understand what I'm saying? So that's what they doing to niggas like me and you, my nigga. We gonna get your tax money, we gonna get your motherfucking medical coverage money, we gonna motherfucking, uh, we gonna get you to work, and produce shit for the state, you know what I mean? Like, bro, it's a hustle, my nigga. So just know that when you signing on the crime, you're signing on to being a slave for the state, my nigga, or the, or the country. So just know that, my nigga. That's when you get caught doing crime, just know you're technically a slave, my nigga. So, you know what I mean? You gotta know these things if you're doing crime. Boca Martinez was popping real deal. Concept Solutions was really good. Dave Dollar was populating. Make Mackie. My nigga Wise. G Hawkins in the building. That's the God Wise. You heard? The infamous. One of the greatest storytellers in the game is in the building. G Hawkins. Make sure y'all subscribe to Sun Page because his YouTube page is under construction right now. He about to pop it off. Rob Black was really good. Finesse the Dawn was populating. New York, New York was popping. Yeah, my G's. Ayatollah was really good. Selassie's son was popping. Yeah, my niggas. But you know what I mean? Sam Eula, what up? So, yeah, it's a fact, my niggas. So, you know, this jail shit, man. This shit is modern day slavery for real, my nigga. It's fucking real, my nigga. It ain't nothing but blacks and Hispanics in that motherfucker, my nigga. And we the minorities of the country, but we the we the majorities in the penitentiary, my nigga. You feel what I'm saying? Because this country wasn't wasn't made for us, my nigga. It was made to for to oppress us. You feel me? So we gonna always find ourselves at the bottom of the motherfucking barrel. We gonna always find ourselves filling the penitentiaries. We gonna always find ourselves motherfucking getting killed and brutalized by the police. Know what I mean, because this ain't our homeland, my nigga. We lost out here, you feel me? We was bored out here. You know what I mean? We ain't gonna be able to function the same way the motherfuckers who founded this country is able to function. You understand? Because it wasn't designed for that. Yeah, bro. You know, you get caught up in that system. Brookline was popping. You get caught up in that system, my nigga. And, you know... You don't know none of this shit until you sit down and read some motherfucking books. And then you realize that shit hits you like a ton of bricks. You like, damn, like this shit really is a hustle. And I'm a hustler, not a customer, man. So I don't appreciate being hustled. That's why I stopped coming to jail, my nigga. I ain't never go back upstate New York after my bid because I realized I was being hustled and taken advantage of it. And, and that was enough to turn me off to the penitentiary. Like that niggas ain't going to be hustling me, my nigga. That nigga's getting that nigga's getting shit like let's just say I'm just giving numbers by examples. Like the government, right? They'll give it they give 
$5,000 for each inmate to eat per year, right? I'm just throwing numbers out there. I don't know what the real number is. But they'll get say, oh, boom, we give every inmate $5,000 worth of food to eat every year. What the state is going to do is they're going to they cut that down to $2,000 and they're going to pocket $3,000, my nigga. And they're going to feed you shit. They're going to feed you $2,000 worth of yearly food instead of $5,000 worth of yearly food. And you're going to eat like shit. And I learned that when I was in Oneida and they had quick chill. You understand what I'm saying? Quick chill is... The, the niggas who make all of the food for the whole state. You understand what I'm saying? And niggas put me on. Niggas was like, yo, bro, they send enough food for every inmate to have a T-bone steak dinner every year. Or not a T-bone steak or chuck steak, whatever, a big ass steak dinner. And they don't give it to niggas. They don't give niggas that steak dinner. They chop the motherfucking meat up and they give you pepper steak over rice. Yeah, I remember that meal up north. Pepper steak over rice with chocolate cake. That was, that was the meal. And that shit was supposed to be steak over rice with chocolate cake. But they're going to cut your, your budget down by a third, my nigga. You're not going to get that steak. You're going to get a piece of that steak chopped up as pepper steak over rice. You feel me? And that's what they do with the whole budget. So whatever your medical coverage is, you're getting a third of that. Whatever your dental coverage is, you're getting a third of that. You feel what I'm saying? So... Shit is a hustle, my nigga. And the more corrupt a city or state is, the worse the conditions in the penitentiary is going to be, my nigga. You feel me? Certain states can't get away with shit like that. But then certain states is off the motherfucking radar where they could get away with murder. Hell no, you ain't getting no forty thousand dollars worth of accommodations. You getting two thousand dollars worth of accommodations. You in a dirty ass cell. You understand what I'm saying? Like you ain't you ain't doing getting none of that, my nigga. Yeah, that beef blood with the with the spaghetti is what made me stop eating meat, my nigga. Shout out to my nigga Biscuit from Harlem. From Harlem, so I was working in the motherfucking mess hall. Making that spaghetti and meat sauce. And that nigga told me, yo, son, don't eat that shit, son. I'm like, why not? Nigga said, because when they when they get the chopped meat in the mess hall, that shit be having like two whole gallons of blood in the bag. Like a giant bag of chopped meat that they pour in that shit. Nigga said, they ain't stir frying that shit before they add it. They not doing none of that. They pouring a whole bag of chopped meat into the tomato sauce. And then they boil the meat in the, in the tomato sauce. And that's the spaghetti and meat sauce. And nigga said like two gallons of blood be inside that bag. And they dump the blood and everything in that tomato sauce. And they boil it all together. He says, son, so all of that red sauce you eating, nigga, a nice percentage of that shit is straight cow blood, my nigga. Don't eat that shit. And him just telling me that, I never ate red meat again, my nigga. Just me thinking about how many times I had ate that spaghetti and meat sauce. And I was taking a napkin and wiping my mouth and seeing that red sauce on the napkin. Nigga, that shit was blood, nigga. Niggas feeding niggas cow blood over spaghetti, my nigga. You heard? I said, all right, I'm done. And I told you I stopped eating chicken because I went to a store in the Lower East Side one day. And I bought a fried chicken. I bought a piece of fried chicken and french fries. You heard? And they must have threw that shit in the deep fryer frozen. So when I left, I took a bite and it was a thigh, you heard? So you know thighs be kind of, them shits be, you know what I mean? That dark meat don't be, that shit be different. So I bit into the chicken thigh and that shit was dumb, bloody, my nigga, and cold. You know how that feels to bite into a hot piece of chicken that's hot on the outside and then the inside is cold and bloody? That shit, I just threw that shit on the floor. I said, I'm good with chicken. Fuck chicken, I ain't fucking with that shit no more. That shit turned me off so much, I just stopped fucking with it, son. Real talk, forever. I ain't never eaten it since. And then fish, how I stopped eating fish, my baby mom started stopped eating fish before me, and I couldn't let her have one up on me. And then I was like contemplating stop eating it, and one day I bought a motherfucking uh, piece of kingfish from the, from the fish market, and that shit was straight spoiled. It ain't nothing on this earth that tastes worse 
than spoiled fish, my nigga. They must have had that shit not refrigerated correctly or whatever. Niggas gave me that shit. I bit into that shit. It was a kingfish sandwich. I bit into that shit, my nigga. The, the rotten taste of fried rotten fish was so disgusting. I never ate that shit again, my nigga. Real talk. I said, that's it. I was already contemplating not eating fish. But when I bit into that rotten piece of kingfish, oh, um, I could still taste that shit to this day, my nigga. Real talk. Every time I see kingfish in the supermarket, fish market, I just think of that shit, nigga. That shit was disgusting. I bit into that shit. I was like, ooh. Just threw that whole shit away, my nigga. I said, yo, I'm good. I'm good with the flesh. I can't fuck with flesh no more. Should be dead and tasting dead. You heard? But if you think about it, they say you are you are what you eat, right? So I I I made it logical like this. If you eat a bunch of live foods, you're gonna live, my nigga. If you eat a bunch of dead foods, you are what you eat. You heard? If I ain't doing nothing but dead, dead cow, dead chicken, dead pig, dead if I'm not doing nothing but eating dead shit, what am I sending a mess? What type of message am I sending to my brain? What type of message am I sending to my body? Like you know what I'm saying? Like, nigga, we just eat dead shit all day. Like, that shit is gross, my nigga. Carcasses. And then these niggas be lying, too. I was just reading some shit. You know how you see motherfucking meat on the shelf in the supermarket? My nigga, what meat stays red after it's been dead for three, four days, my nigga? You understand what I'm saying? Meat don't stay fucking red and bloody after three, four days of being dead. That shit gonna turn gray and brown. Rigor mortis sets in, and that shit gonna get hard and brown, my nigga. How the fuck a steak be in the supermarket for five, six days, red and bloody? That don't make scientific sense, my nigga. They, they injecting them steaks with oxygen and carbon, my nigga, to keep them shits from turning colors. So when, so when you eating a steak, nigga, you're like, oh, this is a good one right here, nice and red and rich and bloody. Nah, nigga, niggas is injecting that shit with chemicals to keep it from turning colors because they know niggas ain't going to buy no brown steak, my nigga. That's why when you see halal meat and all of that, that shit be like gray. It don't be all red and bloody and all of that. Like, know what I mean? That ain't right and exact, my nigga. And that's why Muslims call that shit hit in the head beef. Hit in the head, halal beef. They slice the throat of the cow in the name of Allah, let the blood drain out. You understand what I'm saying? Because the Bible even tells you, man, do not eat blood for the life is in the blood. Tells you that in the Bible. Google that verse. Man, do not eat blood for the life is in the blood. You are what you eat, my nigga. You eat fucking animals, you're going to be animalistic. That's the bottom line. You understand what I'm saying? But, um, yeah, so hitting the head meat, rip meat that do be red and bloody, and then they inject with oxygen and carbon to keep it from turning colors, that shit is hitting the head, son. Niggas is putting cows on a motherfucking... On a, on, a, on a conveyor belt And as the cows come They hit them niggas in the head With a big ass sledgehammer Boom and kill them You understand what I'm saying But what they don't tell you is When they hit the cow in the head With that sledgehammer It causes blood The blood to clot up all through the body The brain is hemorrhaging my nigga The blood is all over the body In places it don't supposed to be in That's why that shit be all red and bloody And, they, and the Muslims call it Hit in the head beef because that shit was hit with a sledgehammer, damaging the brain and the skull, and then the meat is just ruined. It's just all bloody. Like you feel what I'm saying? That's that's and that's savagery, my nigga. Hitting the cows in the head with a fucking sledgehammer, uh, and they don't know. They just coming down the shit, man. They bet it's boom. Sledgehammer hit them. That shit is cruelty, my nigga. So that's another reason why I really don't eat meat because that shit is ultimate cruelty. Now don't get me wrong. I ain't no perfect nigga. I wear leather boots and leather shit. You know what I'm saying? We're in. You know, as the world changes, niggas is embracing vegan leather, and that's good. But I so I'm not um purely innocent, but I can't sit here and take part in eating some shit where niggas is basically torturing animals all day, every day. You understand what I'm saying? And then what a lot of niggas don't know is meat is fucking up the motherfucking planet earth my nigga because in order for these big industrial farmers see we think of farming we think a little nice house little house on the prairie with a couple of cows that's the way it's supposed to be but when niggas is industrial farming for big companies like mcdonald's and burger king and shit like that 
Son, they taking up super land masses to farm these animals and they cutting down trees to do that. So basically to produce the meat that people want and have a demand for, niggas is destroying the oxygen and the ozone layer of the planet Earth by constantly cutting down trees and virgin forests in order to make enough giant land to house thousands of cows and chickens and fish because they farm fish too. Don't get it fucked up. After fish you see in the supermarket, them shits ain't caught in the wild, my nigga. They make a lake, like a reservoir, and they grow fish in that motherfucker, and then they kill them and feed them to you. So when you thinking you eating, oh, a natural, delicious salmon, nah, nigga, that shit is a science salmon that they corn feeding that shit, franken fish, and then you get it. By the time you get it, nigga, that shit is, is looking like a real fish, but that shit was bred in a fucking laboratory somewhere. So it's like, the meat shit is crazy. Vegetables ain't innocent evil, my nigga. Vegetables ain't innocent evil, believe me. So, you know, we all fucked up, man. This whole diet is why the best thing you could do is try to eat organically, my nigga. It's rough and it's hard, but that's the best thing. And then people think that organic food don't have pesticides. That is not true, my nigga. Organic foods, that means they use organic pesticides. They use pesticides. They're just organic pesticides. You feel what I'm saying? So, you know. This shit be tricky, my nigga. Niggas be painting fruit and all of that, my nigga. You go in the supermarket, fucking tomatoes. Niggas got two, 200 tomatoes. Some shit's just perfect red gleaming. Cut it out, my nigga. Y'all niggas dying them shits, bro. Niggas is using vegetable dyes and all type of shit. Spraying the apples and the tomatoes to make them look more appetizing. To make them look more beautiful so you could buy them shits. You feel what I'm saying? So, you know, shit ain't nothing safe out this bitch, my nigga. Ain't nothing safe. Word is bought. Javon Lloyd was popping. Wreck, I appreciate you, my bro. Glow stick 760. Shorty Mike was popping. My nigga Shorty Mike in the building, locked down in that Louisiana State Penitentiary right now. Y'all niggas follow my bro, subscribe to him, show him that love. My nigga Shorty Mike, go comment on that new episode. Now I mean, sentenced to 35 years at the age of 16. Go comment on that shit, share that to Facebook. We need, we need as many motherfuckers to see that as possible. You heard? That's what we about in Gen Pop. We ain't just sitting here telling jail stories. We trying to ha actually make a motherfucking difference out there. You feel what I'm saying? Like real talk. So y'all niggas show that love to my nigga Shorty Mike. He got the latest upload on the channel right now. Um, 16 years old, sentenced to 35 years in Louisiana State Penitentiary. And that's my nigga who held my nigga Squeak down when my nigga Squeak from Fort Greene was locked up in New Orleans and them niggas had real hammers and they was murdering niggas up in there. My son was the only nigga from New York, from Brooklyn in there. And the nigga Shorty Mike held my nigga Squeak down. You heard? Know what I mean? So, show that nigga that unconditional love. Real talk. Yeah, bro. We got to get niggas out that penitentiary. Like I said, we ain't tolerating no... No illegal sentences, no innocent motherfuckers being locked up. We ain't tolerating it, my nigga. If we find out a nigga's over sentenced, illegally sentenced, or wrongfully convicted, we doing what we can over here to help get his story out to the world so that a motherfucker can. I'm already, I'm yo, Shorty Mike. I'm already hollering at my nigga Blood on the Razor Wire. Shout out to my nigga Blood on the Razor Wire. I heard he be helping niggas. Get they sentences overturned and things of that nature and trying to do what he can do for the brothers locked down. I just I just sent son an email a few minutes ago because he said he interested in seeing and looking into your case, my nigga. So we out here working, man. We ain't playing no fucking games out here. You heard? Johnny Blaze was popping, my nigga. Isaiah Lee was really good. Soy Gang was popping. G Walls was popping. Yeah, man. Good looking, bro. You bumping that glamorous life? That's what I. That's what up, bro. Appreciate you, Slim Blunt Gang in the building. I see you flagging that Gen Pop too. You heard? I don't know how to pronounce your name. I just see pizza up in there. Let me know how to pronounce your shit. 
The real Estelle, what up? I see you flagging. Oh, I see that's that 100. I thought that was that gen pop. You got to step that up, bro. But yeah, man. New York YouTube was popping. Yeah, bro. But yeah, I got a new episode dropping tomorrow too, man. Y'all go leave a comment on that shit now so that YouTube could toss it out into the serious algorithm in the morning. You heard? Vija R, what up? Is that Vija or Vija? Word up. But yeah, my niggas. Okay, pizza was popping. You from Amboy? That's what up, my nigga. That's what up. I see you flagging that pop. You heard? I see you flagging that good pop. That's what I'll be liking to see in a minute. Everybody shit gonna be popped up. Give me a real gang. It's many gangs. It's Gen Pop is like a real prison. There's many gangs in here, my nigga. You got the you got the Gen Pop fam gang that we run the prison. Then you got Comment Gang, which is an offshoot of us. You got Slim Blunt Gang. I'm about to start Coffee Gang. I don't know how many of y'all niggas is Coffee Gang out there, but I'm about to start my morning Coffee Gang. Yurt. Green Gang was popping. D1. You probably was in D1 with my nigga L Power. That nigga Steve O. Steve O and L Power got it on in D1. I don't know if that was D1 or D2. You heard? Where the black chick was working at in that dorm. I think it was D1, though. D1 was a wild ass dorm, though. I remember that. And D2. Ram squad in the building was really good. I'm saying though, what up? Jumbo papers was really good, my bro. Yeah, y'all niggas gotta go subscribe to the Fat Vegetarian channel, man. I made the separate Fat Vegetarian channel, my nigga, cause, you know what I mean? I don't wanna be mixing up the content too much, but I got the separate Fat Vegetarian. We on our way to 200 subscribers already. You feel what I'm saying? It's going down. You wanna hear some funny shit, my nigga? My daughters, my daughters, I got my 12-year-old, my 13-year-old and 9-year-old daughters. Them niggas went so hard on YouTube over the last summer. They made two monetized pages, bro. Now, I mean, then I got, we got mad at them one time. He was doing some wild shit. And we made them delete the motherfucking one of the YouTube pages. No, he wasn't thinking. But we recovered one of them shits. Nigga, they my daughters. Made two YouTube pages that got a partnership, bro. They got a thousand subscribers and four thousand watch hours within one year on two different pages, bro. You understand what I'm saying? So if my little daughters could do it, yeah, anybody could do it. Gap gang in the building, you already know. Michael Strahan is our leader. I'm second in command. Kenneth True Blood, what up? I see you banging that wrench gang in the building. Real talk. Yeah, man. I just was watching an episode, uh, uh, episode, uh, a new episode from my nigga 16 to Life. You heard? If y'all don't know about my nigga 16 to Life, y'all niggas go subscribe to his page right now. That's the West Coast Goat. Now, I mean, they calling me the East Coast Jail Story Goat out here. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't saying that myself. That's just what y'all niggas is calling me. The East Coast Story Goat. But my nigga 16 to Life is the West Coast Story Goat. So if you need them West Coast jail stories, my nigga did 24 years straight. Go follow 16, D-A-L-I-F-E, 16, duh, life. Go follow my nigga right now. You understand what I'm saying? Because he is the truth. And that's a fact. Vaughn P, I see you in the building. I see you flagging that wrench gang. You heard? Mm -hmm. I ain't never getting rid of my gap, nigga. These motherfucking bitches love my gap. You heard? These broads love my gap, nigga. Amiri Visa was populating. Larry Lopez was populating. My nigga Vaughn P, that's one of the realest niggas in Gen Pop, you heard? That's one of the first niggas who shouted out, who, sh who, who hollered at me and supported the movement in a major way. My nigga Vaughn P from D.C. 
Show my nigga that love because he is the truth and he's a real nigga. You know what I mean? And he is definitely grade A family in this gen pop shit. That nigga a general in this gen pop shit. You heard? Detroit was popping. Tijuana, what up? Bruno, what it is? Ultra, what's really good? Heli Deli, what up? I see you repping that Gap Gang. Gap Gang in the building, nigga. All my kids got a Gap in they shit. You heard? That's the trademark. My daughter's my daughter's singing group is called the Gaps. We ain't playing no games. The Gaps, baby. You ain't got that Gap in your mouth. Pause. Word up. My daughter's got a song too. It's old now because they got older now, but you could put the Gaps Dance. You heard me and my daughters. We got a song together. It's on Spotify and all of that. The Gaps Dance. Shit is hard too. Beat stupid. The beat is stupid. Rest in peace, my nigga Murder, man. Still alive through these through these stories, man. I be listening to them stories sometimes. Them shits be making me laugh, bro. It's like son is really alive. Like I'm really here talking to the dude. Like that's the best thing about this channel, my nigga. All of this shit gonna live forever, my nigga. We creating the eternal life on this motherfucker. Let's keep it real, son. Let's keep it real. All of this shit gonna live forever. While we long gone, I'm sure YouTube ain't going no motherfucking way, my nigga. So, and then even if it do go somewhere, some of y'all niggas out there downloading every episode and saving them files just in case. So shit get hectic and YouTube don't exist no more. Them shits are all resurfaced, my nigga. And I'm saving all of the episodes and I'm going to start putting all of the episodes on a major disc. So if anything was to happen, YouTube blow up, whatever the fuck, we got all them episodes saved. And I encourage y'all niggas to do that too, nigga. Download the episodes. Fuck that. We got to protect the content. I mean. Jason Clark, I appreciate your son is actually in the chat room right now. Shorty Mike, you heard? Son is in the penitentiary right now. He tuned into the channel, you heard? I mean, that's the latest upload. Y'all niggas go comment. If y'all want to show love to son, just leave a comment. Comment, comment, gang. Comment a period, an explanation mark, a laugh, a motherfucking emoji. I don't care what you comment. But the more comments we get, the more views we going to get, the more people hear the shit, and the more likely somebody going to try to help the situation. You feel what I'm saying? Sound travels at 1,120 feet per second, my nigga. Slim Blunt Gang is always in the building, my nigga. Got this shit right here, you heard? That's a fact, nigga. Slim Blunt Gang is in the building. Wise Brim was really good. Fort Green in the building. Fort Green Projects is always in the building. Shout out my nigga Saquon. Coming with some new shit real soon. I got a new episode from Squeak. I'm supposed to be up. I'm editing that shit tonight. I'm bullshitting, so I got to edit that shit tomorrow morning. The new episode was Squeak dropping. You heard? And my nigga Shug, my nigga Marvell, man. I know I'm supposed to holler at you, y'all. I be trying to do too many interviews, man. Know what I mean? But um, I gotta holler at I gotta holler at some niggas because I got some content coming, bro. I got some follow-up stories about Born Son that's different. I got some different stories that niggas never heard in their life that's coming. So it's like it's a lot of shit going down, my nigga. Can of true blood, I see you, bro. We spoke about some Kingsborough legends. My nigga Saquon spoke about um what's son name from Kingsborough? Um the fuck son name, man. I can't remember right now to come back to me. Um go look up Saquon. Saquon stories when he talking about when he first went to Kaksaki. Now, I mean, he speak about son from Kingsboro that was there. I can't remember son's name right now. I'm, 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 my head is fucked up. But I was locked up with the nigga Fats from Kingsboro, too. Um, Fats that had the gold fronts in his mouth. 
from Kingsborough. I know it was two fats, I think, from Kingsborough. But the one I was locked up with, dark skin fats with the gold, I think son got killed. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I don't want to push shit out there, out there that's not true and shit like that. But, I mean, I was locked up with the nigga Fats from Kingsborough. We was in Camp Gabriel together. That was 100 years ago. I got a story about Kingsborough on the channel where I got jumped by the whole MOP. That's where we was coming back from. We was coming back from Kingsborough Projects. And my nigga Fowl got a story about Kingsborough. Oh, my God. Hold on. Did we do that story? <laughs> Damn, I don't know if we recorded that shit. Foul holla at me, my nigga. My nigga Foul got a crazy Kingsboro story. Damn, we ain't record that shit. We bugging out, man. Gotta holla at the nigga Foul, man. We gotta do that Kingsboro story, son. Foul got two Kingsboro stories, actually. Both of them shits is crazy. Tell that nigga foul to holler at me, man. We got to do them stories, man. I'm bullshitting, man. It's bad stories about the style on here, my nigga. I got some style stories coming, though. Some heavy shit. Flatbush, too. Yo, whoever got some crazy stories, my nigga. Jail streets. Long as it ain't no unsolved mysteries. Long it ain't long as it ain't no disrespectful shit that's gonna cause you to get killed in the streets for telling the story. I'm with it, my nigga. You feel what I'm saying? I'm a journalist, so I i I'm not biased. I stay out of this shit. A lot of niggas who I interview, they got it's niggas reaching out to me that got beef with niggas that I be interviewing. You understand what I'm saying? And I'm still gonna get and then I got niggas, this channel so real, my nigga. I got niggas that had major beef with other niggas and they still saying let that nigga tell his story last and let him on the channel last that's this how grown this shit is my nigga this shit deep in the streets you feel what i'm saying ain't you ain't gonna ever find a channel that's this deep in the streets my nigga i got niggas that niggas done blamped at each niggas done did all type of shit to each other and they saying I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm gonna let you let that nigga tell his story, my nigga. You feel what I'm saying? Real talk. So we are making history with this shit, and that's a fact. Word up. But my nigga murder, man. My nigga murder. Anytime I hear that nigga voice, it just makes me... It just does something to me, my nigga. Because, like, that's my son, bro. You feel me? And me and son used to build on all type of shit, my nigga. You feel me? So... I'm tight that my son ain't get to, like I was trying to say the other day, my phone had died. Like I told you, the nigga murder had the, <coughs> murder had the, the, um, the GLE 350, right? In blue. So I was working, busting my ass on trying to get me a new car for months. For months, I've been trying to get me a new car. You feel me? Because I was going through hell with my car, my nigga. Where I was ready to drive that shit off the bridge, like Grand Theft Auto, like this into the water and swim back to my house. You feel me? Real talk. That's how tight I was. So I kept telling son. I said, son, I'm making moves, my nigga. I'm about to get me a fucking whip, my nigga. I'm about to save up. I'm about to do what I got to do. And I'm about to get me a fucking new car, my nigga. You understand what I'm saying? And we both going to be stunting. You heard? We both going to be cruising around the city with something crazy, my nigga. I can't wait. And son did not live to see me get my shit, man. That shit got me tight, my nigga. You heard? We were supposed to land cruise together, nigga. You feel me? I had plans, nigga. We were supposed to go through the Ville on a late night. You understand what I'm saying? Bumping all type of Brownsville music. Creeping through the hood. You understand what I'm saying? But you know, anything happens for a divine reason, my nigga. Everything is written in the book of life and the scriptures cannot be broken. And that's a fact, my nigga. All this shit is already written, my nigga. You heard? We just we just characters in the script, my nigga. And that's a fact. Code name Mots was popping, my nigga. I don't even know, bro. I got like 10 tech suits or something like that, but I'm gonna keep it real with you. I just copped this Adidas suit, man. Shit made shit gave me a new, a new 
a new found a new found respect for Adidas, my nigga. I already seen a lot of Adidas shit, but now I found because you know Adidas got little different brands in their brands. Like you got Trio shit, you got ZNE shit, then they got some next level high end shit that be like five hundred a sweatsuit. You feel what I'm saying? But like, bro, I'ma give y'all niggas the jewels. Them Adidas winterized sweatsuits, them shits is different. Them shits made them shits. This just made me look at the, my tech suits with a side eye like, I got to step it up, nigga. So I'm going to get me a few more of those motherfucking trio winterized sweatsuits. I'm going to get a few more of them shits. Them shits is serious. You know, I'm an ignorant, I'm an ignorant black motherfucker, my nigga. So, you know what I mean? I like sweatsuits, man. You know what I mean? I'm going to apologize. I'm going to get that out the way and apologize for that early, my nigga. I'm a sweatsuit wearing motherfucker. You heard? I'm an ignorant polo and Nike wearing motherfucker. I apologize. You understand what I'm saying? It was not my fault. It's Brooklyn, my nigga. I grew up in Brooklyn. You heard in Brownsville, Brooklyn at that. That's like Brooklyn to the fifth power. So, you know, I can't. I'm a sucker for a sweatsuit. It could be a Fila sweatsuit. It could be a Lecoq Sportif. It could be a fucking Sergio Tech. It could be a motherfucking Adidas. It could be a Gap sweatsuit. Listen, I'm a sucker for a sweatsuit, my nigga. Champion sweatsuit. As you can see, I be wearing champion sweatsuits. I'm a sucker for a sweatsuit, my nigga. Hurt. The Ville is like some places in the Bronx. The Ville is like the South Bronx, basically. Brownsville and the South Bronx is very similar, my nigga. Very, very similar. You know what I mean? That's why the Bronx and Brooklyn was always beefing on Rikers Island and shit like that back in the days because Bronx and Brooklyn is very similar places. And that's why a lot of people from Brooklyn, they eventually moved to the Bronx like me. You know what I mean? Niggas from Brooklyn live in the Bronx that I know, my nigga. Forget about it. I stay bumping in the niggas. I'll be like, son, what up? You out here? Be like, yeah, son, I'm out here on the low. I'll be like, me too, nigga. Because it's like Brooklyn, my nigga. The Bronx is a lot like Brooklyn. It is, my nigga. It really is. You feel me? I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not comfortable in Manhattan. I lived in Manhattan for years. I never was comfortable, my nigga. When I'm in Harlem, I'm not comfortable. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I know a lot of Harlem niggas, good niggas and all of that, but I'm, I would never feel comfortable in Harlem, my nigga. It's too fast paced for me. It's too, it's just like a fucking TV show. You understand what I'm saying? It's like 200 niggas on the block, 30, 300 chicks, 30 cop cars. 17 Benzes, like, it's too much for a Brooklyn nigga. We, our hoods ain't like that. Like, I'm from Brownsville. That shit is desolate, my nigga. Like, you know, if you ain't from Brownsville, you don't even be out there. Like, niggas don't be coming out there to hang out. You understand what I'm saying? Ain't no hanging out. Like, you feel me? Niggas stay in their projects. Like, you go to the next projects, you might get killed. You feel what I'm saying? So, when I be in Manhattan, that shit be too, it's too much for me, my nigga. It's too open. Now I mean? I only could be there for a certain amount of time, then I'm out. The Bronx is like Brooklyn, son. They can stay in their hoods. It's mad desolate areas and low-ass, dark, desolate areas. It ain't like that in Manhattan. Everything is like on the, under a big fucking spotlight in Manhattan. You understand what I'm saying? The Bronx is low. I be low as a motherfucker, nigga. I used to live in Castle Hill. I used to live in fucking Bronx Neck. I used to live in I used to live in fucking White Plains 219 from White Plains Road. I used to live at 243rd on a on the on the borderline of Mount Vernon. I had to get up out of there before I caught a body. I'ma keep it real with you, my nigga. That's the neighborhood that pushed me to almost going back to the penitentiary, my nigga. The Mount Vernon niggas, I'ma keep it real with you. Like the borderline of Mount Vernon in the Bronx, Mount Vernon niggas used to come over to hustle in the Bronx, right? And I'm going to keep it real with you, bro. Them niggas was so loose, I had to get up out of there. I'm like, if I don't get from over here, I'm going to I'm gonna catch a body, my nigga. You heard? There was this one kid, my nigga, from Mount Vernon. This nigga had like four teardrops on his face, my nigga. You heard? Like, this is the borderline of the Bronx and Mount Vernon, 243rd. Soon as you cross the street from on 243rd, you are in Mount Vernon. So, niggas used to be coming on 
to that block in the Bronx to get money, hustle crack and dope and shit like that, right? Shit had dope house. I'm talking about this shit was this shit was a crazy area, bro. So Mount Vernon niggas used to be coming out there and they be fucking with some of the Bronx niggas and then they become like one entity. Like that's why it'd be a lot of Mount Vernon niggas that be getting caught up on Rikers Island because they be catching cases right over that borderline on Mount on White Plains Road somewhere. You feel what I'm saying? Cause they be fucking with them niggas in Wakefield. That's the name of the section. Wakefield. Wakefield goes from like 233rd to 243rd and or maybe a little bit sooner than that. But it ends on 243rd and then it's Mount Vernon. Mount Vernon niggas be creeping into into that into Wakefield and it's just real terrible over there, my nigga. And like I said, it was this one nigga. This nigga had like four teardrops on his face, my nigga. And every time I seen this nigga, he just irked my blood, my nigga. One time, I forgot what the nigga... First of all, every time I used to see the nigga, he just be looking. I don't like the way he be looking. You understand what I'm saying? You feel me? I be keeping it moving. I had the white explorer at this time. I be keeping it moving. I'm not from out there, my nigga. I live there and that's it. When I moved there, I thought it was a nice ass building. I don't know nothing about the Bronx. I thought it was a nice neighborhood. Nah, nigga, that shit was a fucking war zone. You understand what I'm saying? So... Talking about dope city, nigga. Heroin, heroin city. You feel me? It was terrible. So I'm talking about 14-year-old prostitute chicks on the block, son. Selling pussy all day long. Police don't do nothing. Because it's a jurisdiction. It's Mount Vernon and it's the Bronx on that block. So neither one of them fuck with it. The police from Mount Vernon don't fuck with it. The police from the Bronx don't fuck with it. Word the mother, that shit was that shit was the wild, wild west. I mean, I ain't talking about just gunplay because I'm used to gunplay. I'm talking about, I'm talking about fucking disgraceful shit like teenage prostitutes, niggas dope, niggas selling dope all day, every day, niggas getting killed, shot, killed. Now I mean, every other fucking day, like you feel what I'm saying, like. All type of crazy shit. But it's like that one kid, I used to be seeing this nigga and he used to just be looking at me too hard, my nigga. I'd be minding my business, nigga, just be looking at me and it got a hundred teardrops on his face. And I used to be saying to myself, why the fuck this nigga keep looking at me, my nigga? Why the fuck this nigga keep staring in my face every time I'm coming in and out the building? You heard? I had a little herc. I had a nice little herc at the time. Pinky ring was diamonded up, shining. You feel what I'm saying? I used to be thinking I was on my old school. I used to be wearing BVDs and shit. I be having my nylon BVD with my herc on, with my pinky ring, hopping out my new Explorer. Niggas was slightly hating me. You feel what I'm saying? So I be ignoring niggas and shit. One time, it was another nigga that he was from the Bronx and he fucked with the Mount Vernon niggas. Niggas be in my building hustling, right? We ain't know nothing of this at first. So anytime I see this nigga, he be looking. It's both of these niggas. They, they be seeing me, they be looking at me. I be like, <sighs> like, you know what I mean? Son, stop looking at me, son. You know what I mean? I don't want to be that ignorant nigga. What the fuck you looking at? I don't want to be that nigga shooting a nigga because he's looking at me and all that. That's ignorant. You feel me? But son, stop looking at me, son. In my head, I just be thinking about big psych, nigga. You can admire, but don't look too long. You can admire, my nigga. But don't look too long Because when you look too long It starts getting disrespectful So son used to just be Looking at me too much I'm like It's only a matter of time Before niggas catch me In a bad mood And I just be like You want to suck my dick Like I'll say some foul shit Like if a nigga Keeps staring in my face Like real talk I just get irked One time we come We come me and a nigga OP Because OP was staying with me The nigga Opium Hangman And son is a hot headed nigga He younger than me and at the time, he's a hot-headed nigga. So I had told him, I said, yo, is these two niggas? These niggas, I gave you too crazy, my nigga. You heard? Niggas, I gave you too crazy. He like, word. He like, man, fuck them niggas. So one day I was coming down. We was coming down the stairs. It was like six in the morning. I don't know why the fuck we was coming out so early. But we came up, came downstairs like six in the morning or some crazy shit like that. Or well, it might have been late at night. And then one of the niggas... That always be looking at me was in the fucking lobby. 
And we came out the lobby and nigga was looking at us. Two niggas. Niggas was looking at crazy and nigga OP. His instincts just was like, what's up, my nigga? And the kid was like, he ain't say nothing. My nigga OP was like, what's up, my nigga? What up? Then he caught himself like, all right, let me not get too crazy. But his reflexes already hit the nigga with the, what's up, my nigga? You heard? And the kid kind of was like, he ain't say nothing, but I don't know. Like, so after that, I'm like, yo, it's, it's going to be on with these niggas, my nigga. Just from that right there, it's going to be on with these niggas. You heard? Bro. The kid with the teardrops. Every time I see this nigga, he be smirking. You heard? Like, a nigga be smirking. I don't like that shit, like. You know how a nigga be grilling you, but a nigga be smirking like this is basically saying like, like I'll kill you. That's what I get out of it. You feel what I'm saying? When a nigga be grilling you but smirking, it's like you basically saying you don't respect my gangster. You feel me? Make a long story short, my nigga. You heard? I kept seeing a nigga one day. I was in my whip, and he came to the whip and shit. And the nigga was looking in the whip, fixing his hair. He didn't know I was in there. Mistakes is mistakes. He didn't know I was in there because my back, my back just was tinted. So he was looking in his hair and the chick that he was with was like, yo, you all in that nigga car and this and that, this and that. And of course, to impress the chick that he was with, he was like, he noticed me. Then he noticed me and was like, but to impress the chick, he was like, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck about niggas. I was like, I was about to go upstairs to my crib. You understand what I'm saying? I said. Why, why this nigga, man? Why this, why this nigga got to be disrespectful, my nigga? Why this nigga got to be disrespectful, my nigga? <sighs> I was just about to get out my car and walk upstairs. He walked off with the chick to the store. I said, I'm going to stay here. I'm going to stay here. And I'm going to wait for this nigga to come back. And when he comes back, I'm going to step out this car. And I'm going to give him an opportunity to look at me one more time in a way that I don't like. And I'm going to knock this nigga the fuck out in front of his bitch and everything. This is how I was feeling at the time I was fed up. So the nigga came back. I hopped out the whip and I just stood there and he knew I, he, I guess he picked up on it. But for that one day, he made the decision. I ain't going to stare and smirk at this nigga. And I was like this, and he walked past, and I just was like, I wasn't on some, what up, nigga, but I just was on some. Made serious eye contact, and all he had to do was be like, ice grill, smirk, or anything, and I just would have KO'd, son. And then well, whatever would have happened after that, just would have happened after that. And I'm sure it would have went to hammers, because I know... You walking around with four teardrops on your face, nigga. You done did something. But anyway, the nigga walked past. He ain't look at me that day. And after that day, I kind of made it my business to just stay away from that nigga because he made me come out my character that day. You feel what I'm saying? And then they did some bullshit. Niggas just put a note on my door one day and said, your rent has been raised by $1,000. You heard this how they gentrified black niggas the fuck out the hood. Niggas just put a note on my shit one day. Your rent has been raised by $1,000. I thought them niggas made a typo because we was paying like $1,200 a month. Niggas sent me some shit. Your new rent is $2,200 a month. I said, nah, this got to be this got to be a mistake. So I call niggas. I'm like, yo, what the fuck? What, what the fuck? He's like, yeah, the building is under new management. We, it, everybody's rent going up $1,000. You see how illegal this shit is, my nigga? See, at the time, I didn't know what gentrification was. You understand what I'm saying? Bro, niggas raised my shit by a thousand. So I told niggas, I said, now y'all not getting shit. You understand what I'm saying? Now y'all not getting the 1200. Y'all not getting nothing. See me in court, nigga. So I stopped paying them niggas rent. We stopped paying them niggas rent. We started stacking the guap up, spending that shit, smoking mad weed, all of that. I ain't paying y'all niggas nothing. Y'all want to send me some shit talking about my shit raised by a thousand? It's y'all dub now. Now y'all ain't getting shit. You heard? So I told the nigga, I said, I'm not paying nothing now. See me in court. Eat a dick. You feel what I'm saying? So I, I stopped paying them niggas. I stood in that motherfucking apartment for another, uh, I think like eight months, right? 
we owed them niggas dumb guap. Stood in that shit for like another eight months or whatever. Went to court. Them niggas just said, yo, we'll do away. This, this shit is devil shit, bro. Niggas said, we'll do away with the whole debt if you just move out. You understand what I'm saying? And we moved the fuck out, my nigga. Niggas gentrified us the fuck out of there, my nigga. But everything happens for a reason. Because if I wouldn't have got from over there, eventually, I would have probably caught a case, my nigga. Or got shot or got killed by one of them niggas out there. You feel me? Because they ain't like me. They ain't know me. And I ain't like them. You understand? There was a couple of niggas in the block that was cool. A couple of Spanish niggas I knew they was cool. You feel what I'm saying? But overall... I wasn't feeling it, my nigga. Niggas playing music motherfucking five in the morning, son. It was a house across the street for me. Niggas Guyanese. Niggas playing chutney for f at five in the morning, my nigga. On a Sunday. Niggas got to get up. I had to get up at 6 a.m. every morning. Niggas playing motherfucking chutney and reggae. Nine in the morning. I mean, to five in the morning, my nigga. I was losing my mind in that motherfucker, nigga. I was losing my mind in that bitch. You heard? I said, I got to get out of here, son. I can't live like this too much longer. You heard? I'm telling you. Wakefield, that shit is desolate, my nigga. Look up the few people that got killed there in the last year or so. Like, know what I mean? Like, dumb police killed that nigga. They had police killed some nigga. Then some nigga from, I forgot, some nigga from Brooklyn got killed up there. That shit was all over the news. A lot of niggas knew, son, and all of that. I think he was from the Ville and all of that. Word up. He got killed up there. Like, yo, that shit, that shit was crazy, bro. First day I moved there. First day I moved there, I go to the store. I come back from the store. I see a nigga leaking crazy. His nose. Niggas have broke the nigga nose, matter of fact. Two blood niggas was fighting. Because 243rd is bad, but 241st is even, I mean, 242nd is even worse. You heard 242nd is even worse. As soon as I come out there, I see two blood niggas scrapping. Bing, bong, bing, 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 bong, bing, 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 bing. Nigga broke the nigga nose. Nigga shit was gushing blood like a lake, nigga. Nigga still trying to fight the nigga. Nigga whole, whole, nigga whole outfit was covered with blood from his nose. He's still trying to fight. Nah, nigga, I want five more minutes, nigga. Give me five more minutes. Niggas is like, son, go to the hospital, son. You're losing blood at a rapid amount at a rapid pace. Go to the hospital. Nigga still trying to fight the nigga. Blood splashing all over the place. I'm like, yo, I'm out. I could have stayed in Brownsville for all of this. You heard? But nah, that shit was wild up there, though, my nigga. At nighttime, it just be disgusting. Daytime, side. But nighttime, once that motherfucking clock strike 10 p.m., nigga. Listen, nigga, that shit is the 80s. That shit goes back to the 80s, nigga. The whole Mount Vernon is like that, too. You go out there, that shit like the 80s, nigga. That's my word. Back when that path mark used to be on 3rd and 3rd, I used to, I'm telling you, I used to live over there, so I used to have to go to Mount Vernon supermarkets, all of that shit. You feel what I'm saying? 3rd and 3rd, nigga, that shit niggas be getting murdered. You go, you go to Mount Vernon, you go through the motherfucker. I forgot what block that is. Like, they blocks be mad packed in. I went through that shit one night, like 10, 11 o'clock that night. Word to my mother, my nigga. It was like, it was a Chinese restaurant. Everybody know this block from Mount Vernon. It's like a little Chinese restaurant. And it's like a little project across the street that looks mad nice, but it's not mad nice. But it looks mad nice because it's new. Know what I mean? Or it's like, when I say new, it was probably built in the last 20 years or something like that. But um, I went past that shit one day in front of the Chinese restaurant, my nigga. It was like a hundred niggas in front of the Chinese restaurant, my nigga. I'm like, yo, son, that shit was looking like a video shoot concert. Niggas was just hanging out in front of the Chinese because it ain't really nothing too much to do over there. Niggas was hanging out in front of the Chinese restaurant like a hundred deep, son. I said, God damn. Niggas don't know, man. You go up to Mount Vernon, you will see, my nigga. That shit ain't like the rest of New York. Damn, you know, New York done got developed with nice buildings and shit. It ain't none of that in Mount Vernon, nigga. That shit is the hood. Real talk. Baby Grizz was popping. Jerry Barnes, what up? Real talk. LBPP Media was really good, my G's.
The manual Rowell was really good. Rowell, my fault, was populating, my nigga. But yeah, I've been all over this city, my nigga. You heard? Even that shit I was telling you just now, that's I, I might tell that again because I'm telling you, when I come out with my new series before the partnership, BTP, before the partnership, man, I'm going to talk about my life before this YouTube shit popped off. You feel what I'm saying? Listen. I got some stories for niggas' asses, my nigga. Some broke-ass stories and some crazy stories of the struggle trying to make it and the stupid shit I tried to do and the bullshit hustles I tried to have before this motherfucking shit popped off, my nigga. I got some stories for niggas' asses. Trust me. Trust me, my nigga. From all, from every section. I got stories from Frog's Neck. Listen, my nigga. Oh, man. Living in Throg's Neck. My shit's 6'3", my nigga. I was living in a basement apartment in Throg's Neck where the motherfucking ceilings was six feet, nigga. My shit like this all day. Hitting my head on the ceiling eight times a day, my nigga. You heard? My shit living in a motherfucking... My shit living in a motherfucking... I don't know what you call that shit. What's that movie? Being John Malkovich, nigga. But the niggas was going in that little ass door. That's how my crib was, nigga. Straight up. I got a story about that. The, my Throg's Neck experience. Living in Throg's Neck. Right across the street from Throg's Neck Projects. Got some stories for that. Know what I mean? Man, listen. Got Castle Hill stories. Got a Castle Hill story before the partnership. Now, I mean, it's going to be just regular life stories, but I'm just going to be talking about the neighborhoods that I lived in and the type of shit I've been through living in the motherfucking neighborhoods. Two, that 219th and Willet. I mean, two I used to live on 219th and Willet, right up the block from White Plains Road. Anybody that knows that area, Bond, 219th and Bonds, bro, that shit was a movie every night out there, my nigga. That shit was a movie. That shit a movie every night. I remember one time a nigga, a nigga was in a brand new Benz out there, right? And he was beefing back and forth with some chicks. And the chicks was like, whatever, nigga, whatever, bum ass nigga, whatever. And he got mad and tried to stun off on the chicks and peel off with his Benz. And a nigga tried to floor it. And a nigga floored that shit in reverse by mistake, my nigga. That nigga shit went flying, knocked the whole motherfucking pole down. Boom! I thought it was a rap, nigga. I thought my baby mom's got ran over because she was out there. Nigga floored that shit mad hard like, fuck you, bitch. Arr! That shit just went backwards. Boom! I said, yo, these niggas out of control out here, my nigga. Yo, niggas used to be... Son, I had a neighbor. I'm going to tell this in the BTP, man, before the partnership. I ain't even going to blow it up, my nigga. I'm just going to tell it before the partnership. You know what I mean? But 219th and Barnes and 219th and Willet and White Plains and all of that. Nigga, that shit was going down all day, every day, my nigga. All day. You heard? Dykeman, you know I got 70,000 Dykeman stories. Some of them shits I can't really tell. You heard? Because they just, is you know, it's going to, it causes, causes some people to be upset. You know, people, family members and things of that nature. I'm not talking about necessarily shit that I did. I'm just talking about Dykeman stories, period. But I got five, but got about 500. Got about 500. You heard? Word up, my nigga. Denver, my house, my city was popping, my niggas. I see y'all in the building. Michael Carter, what up? Yeah, that rib on, that, 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 that roach on the rib tip, man. Now, I mean, if y'all niggas never seen that story that I got called the roach on the rib tip, y'all don't know what y'all missing, man. I got to go check that. It's a deep story. You heard? A lot of y'all dudes ain't see that roach on the rib tip, my Gs. But I got some stories, man. And then I keep forgetting. I, record, I recorded a couple of them shits, man. I don't know where they at, man. I be losing shit. But now I got some stories, my nigga. Before the partnership, my nigga. Got stories when I was homeless and I was sleeping in my car. Shit was real, my nigga. I was a renegade out here, my nigga. I'm gonna keep it real with you. I was a beast, my nigga. Let me tell you, I ain't had nowhere to stay. 
I ain't had nowhere to stay and I couldn't go back to my hood because we had did too much shit. That's why I, I, always, I learned a valuable lesson. Never shit in your backyard, my nigga. You know what I mean? And we you know what I mean niggas was blaming at niggas and all of that. Niggas couldn't go back. We could go back, but if we go back, we go into the penitentiary, nigga. Straight up. We go back. We go into the pen, my nigga. Cause I ain't gonna let a nigga do nothing to me. We we wasn't gonna let no nigga do nothing to us. So if we would have stood there, nigga, we going down. Period. So I had to make an executive decision and get the fuck out the hood. And then not only that. My mom's was living there, so I ain't trying to bring mad drama to my mom's door. You feel what I'm saying? Like, I ain't gonna be beefing with niggas in the hood and and, and going home with, to my mother. So I had to get the fuck up out of there, like, you know what I mean? I eventually returned to the hood. But what I'm saying is, at the period of time, it was too hot. It was too hot to go back to the hood. My man had got clapped. You feel what I'm saying? My man had got clapped. My man was, my man had a couple of, Incidents done took place that was involving firearms Discharging you understand what I'm saying? So it was just too hot to go back to the hood at the time You feel what I'm saying? So and then I had gotten to a, a Confrontation with one of my baby moms and I found myself living in my motherfucking car Now each one of my cars is also a story in bump before the partnership because I had some bullshit ass cars I had some good cars, but I've had a couple of bullshit ass cars, too but at this particular time, I had what was called a Chrysler LHS. Now, anybody that knows what a Chrysler LHS is, it's a real weird fucking car, bro. <laughs> it's a we a real weird looking car, bro. You know what I mean? And uh, I wasn't looking too great in that Chrysler LHS. But God damn it. That shit got a nigga from point A to point B. And that shit became my home, nigga. But I'm going to tell you some shit. Let me tell you some shit. <laughs> that shit was a hearse. Yo, it was the Chrysler 300 and then it was the Chrysler LHS. But I'm going to tell you something. If a nigga going to be homeless in these streets, it ain't too many cars you want than a Chrysler. Them shits be big as a motherfucker. I had the little apartment, nigga. You heard? I was sleeping in that motherfucker, nigga. I had that heat on. I had that heat on 90. You heard in the wintertime? Forget about it, nigga. I go get my weed. I go pull up in a neighborhood that don't got no type of alternate side parking or none of that shit. Where a nigga ain't got to wake you up or get no ticket if you sleeping. Listen, my nigga. Listen. I used to have movies. I have a laptop. I had my motherfucking movies downloaded. Nigga, I was homeless, nigga. You heard? I was living out that car like a renegade, nigga. And I was I was a rapper selling motherfucking verses and shit. So what I would do is I'll be homeless sleeping in my car for two days and then I'll sell a verse to a nigga. And I'll make 500 right quick. And I'll go and get a fucking trash ass motel room for two days with 200. Go buy some motherfucker. Got nowhere to stay? <coughs> when you ain't got nowhere to stay, bruh, that shit will bring the hustle out you. I was a renegade, nigga. The first night I ain't have nowhere to stay. I ran down on a bro. I ain't had nowhere to stay, my nigga. It was freezing. I was about to be in the streets that night. Like this is before, this is before I even, if, if either it was before I had the car or when I lost the car. I think it was when I lost the motherfucking car. I don't even know what ever happened to that car. But I think it's when I lost the car and I ain't have nowhere to... Oh, no, 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 I'm bugging out. I had the car. Did I have the fucking car? Nah, I, I, I didn't have the car. My nigga, I ain't have the car. And then I ain't have nowhere to, with nowhere to go, my nigga. You heard? I was just in the streets. I went in the streets. I said, nigga, I'm going to bag a bit. I'm going to bag a fucking chick tonight. And I'm in her crib tonight, nigga. You heard? Nigga, when your back is against the wall, it's against the wall, son. I just was posted up in Lincoln Center, nigga. I was posted up in Lincoln Center. I was hollering at everything. I was looking pretty decent. You know what I mean? I wasn't looking like no homeless nigga or nothing like that. My nigga, listen, I was pressing everything. Yo, shorty, what's good? What's popping? What up? No shyness, no nothing, because I couldn't afford that, because I would have been in the fucking cold, sleeping in the motherfucking, in the staircase that night. You heard? Bag something day 
within an hour, son. The first thing I hollered at, I bagged him. Yo, what's up? Yo, let me come check you. Boom. Bitch, bro, just happened to have a fucking brownstone in, in the sty, my nigga. Like, she lived in a brownstone. I said, nigga, let me come. So the bro was a real bro, though, man. Shout out to that bro. She knows who she is. I did her. I, I treated her fucked up. I'm going to keep it real with you. I treated her fucked up. And, and, and the real reason why, I, like, you know what I mean? It was a lot of shit, my nigga. But I treated her fucked up. But I was sick because I was living with my daughter. So this was, like, the first time I wasn't living with my daughter. Oh, man. Me being away from my kid, I ain't have no sex drive, my nigga. Bro used to want to fuck all the time. I couldn't even fuck her because I was sick from not being around my daughter. You feel what I'm saying? I couldn't even think about sex. All I could think about was my fucking daughter. You feel what I'm saying? So she used to be like, oh, this nigga don't even want to fuck me. I'd be like, it ain't that. My nigga is that my daughter's on my mind and that shit is taking away my, my whole sex drive. But make a long story short, nigga, I bagged the broad day one. Day one with a crib. You understand? And she was like, yo, you could come. When I first went there, I had to handle that scandal. You understand what I'm saying? After that, she was like, yo, not me. Yo, listen, you can stay here anytime you want to. You can come here every day if you want to. I was like, Phew. little did she know, nigga. She stopped me from being in a motherfucking staircase somewhere. You heard? But that ain't last long. That ain't last long, my nigga. Then I think, I, I don't know. I think, I, I don't know what happened after that, man. But. A nigga was going through some shit in these streets. But I'm going to tell you, I was a beast, nigga. I had motherfucking... I was online, like, you know what I mean? Tag, shit like that. Son, I was pressing everything. I was pressing everything. Like, I was, it wasn't none of that small talk. I was telling bitch straight up, yo, you got a crib? What up? I got the weed and the henny. What's popping? Bitches was like, come through. You heard? And that's when I had the whip, son. I was ODing, son. I was going in Broad's cribs, and like I said, this shit was business, my nigga. I ain't had nowhere to stay. You feel me? I needed places to take a shower. I needed places to sleep and, and get two, three hours of sleep. You feel what I'm saying? So I could make it the next day. So I was bagging fucking Broad's. They were straight business, my nigga. I just needed to take a fucking shower, needed to go to sleep. You understand what I'm saying? My nigga, I was in all type of out of control hoods that you get murdered in. You hear me? I was in all type of murderous hoods, my nigga. Sneaking up in Broad's cribs. I was bugging. But when you in them streets and you ain't got nowhere to stay, you will see that shit will either make you or break you, nigga. You will see a side of yourself that you never thought existed, my nigga. I, I was a beast. My hustle game, it started getting to a point where every fucking day I was hustling up three, four hundred dollars. This was 15 years ago, but I was hustling three, four hundred dollars out of from nothing, my nigga. Just the Internet from my phone. You understand what I'm saying? Or wherever the fuck I was on. I don't know what the fuck I was on at the time, but I was making money because I had to, bro. I had to. You feel what I'm saying? And when I did finally get a place to stay. I kind of missed my back being against the wall like that. You feel me? Like, I used to wake up saying, nigga, I got to make $300, $400 today, get a hotel room, get some weed, get some liquor. You understand what I'm saying? Like, nigga, I was living on that type of level. So every day, I just was finding a way to get some money, son. Real talk. It's cold out here. It ain't freezing right now, but a nigga wouldn't want to be homeless in this weather. You heard? But that cold I have you, that cold I have you hustling, son. But I'm talking about I was an animal, son. I never got back on that level again. Like, I'm talking about I was pressing bitches in the street so hard. It was a, it was crazy, son. Like, I don't know, not on no, no sicko shit, but I just was hollering and I wasn't playing no games. Yo, what's up? Yo, let me holler at you. Come here, let me talk to you. It's like, yo, where you from? What's up? Now I mean, blah, blah. I wasn't playing nothing, nigga. Yo, you smoke, yo, I'm coming through. Hey, give me your number. I'm coming through. Real talk, bro. My shit hitting bitches up on the internet. Yo, what's up? I wasn't playing no games. I wasn't no, how you doing? How's everything? How's your day? Wasn't none of that shit. I was like, yo, what up? I got weed. I got Henny. What's really good? We drinking, we smoking what? You'll be surprised how many bitches be like, come through, nigga. 
Yo, what up? I got the weed. I got the motherfucking. I got a, I got the good bottle of Henny. You understand what I'm saying? I got about a half an ounce of weed. What's popping? Bitches be like, yo, here's my address. I was pulling up on all type of broads. I'm going to keep it real, my nigga. I feel bad some of the chicks that I was pulling up on because, you know what I mean? I saw them once or twice, never saw them again because I was moving. I was in a different borough every night. Like, you feel what I'm saying? And there's a side of me that I like that life, my nigga. You heard? I ain't, it was just me, son. It wasn't no kids. It wasn't no broad that I had to that I had to, to to please. It wasn't no family members. It was just me, nigga. I was in the streets by myself every day. You feel what I'm saying? It's a side. That shit is. That shit is. That shit is fun a little bit, my nigga. It ain't no fun being homeless, but it's fun when your back is against the fucking wall and you gotta hustle to survive, nigga. You heard? I was impressing myself like, damn, I made another 400 today. I'm a bad motherfucker. You heard? Just off a of straight selling verses, my nigga. I ain't give a fuck. I'll be like, yo, I might have sold a verse for 500 yesterday. Another nigga be like, yo, I only got two. I'll be like, give me that shit. Give me that shit. That's when Western Union, Union was popping. You heard? I used to be back and forth to Western Union, nigga, picking up bread. Be like, yes. Now I can go get something to eat. It's times, nigga, I'm starving. I had to sell a verse to get a motherfucking, to get a meal up, nigga. Real talk, like, yo, I just sold a verse for 150, nigga. I'm going to get some groceries. That's how, that's how real it was. Know what I mean? Me and that nigga OP, forget about it. We was living in Castle Hill. We had an apartment, nigga. Listen, son. Niggas was selling mixtapes, son, to get food, son. Niggas was selling mixtapes to get food, my nigga. It was real. You heard? So a nigga like me, nigga could never say that LAZ ain't go through it. Son, niggas was selling mixtapes, son. Niggas was standing on the block of the pizza shop, my nigga. Real talk. We was on Randall Avenue, my nigga. We was on, we was on Castle Hill and Randall. But we was on Castle Hill. We used to be standing in front of a pizza shop. Not the pizza shop that, that's famous with the big ass slices that's in Castle Hill. But the next one down, that's on the corner. It's another little small pizza shop. We used to be standing on that fucking block with mixtapes, nigga. Trying to sell mixtapes so we could get us some pizza, nigga. One time, this nigga came up to us and the niggas was like, he said, that's y'all? The shit that we was selling. We was like, yo, this our shit. He was like, yo, that's y'all? And we was like, yeah. He said, yo, my nigga, listen, man. I don't even listen to none of that shit. But I could see it in y'all niggas' face. He said, hey, let me get that shit. Nigga gave us 10 cash. Nigga, we ran to the pizza shop to go get some motherfucking food, nigga. We ran like this. Yo, we got 10 cash. Real talk, my nigga. We was fucked up. We was fucked up, nigga. Nigga don't never want to be that fucked up again. Straight up. And we was still trying to eat mad healthy and be vegetarian. We was wild. Castle Hill Project, we not from out there. Nobody knows us, my nigga. We walking through Castle Hill Projects at 2, 3 in the morning looking for weed, my nigga. We bugging. You heard? We was fucking bugging, my nigga. Because there was times where we was so fucked up. I might sell a verse, but I sell that shit at 2 in the morning. I be like, yo, son, I just made... Nigga just PayPal me a hundred dollars, son. We be like, what? Yes. Son, we gotta go to the ATM and get that out, son. Niggas be walking around Castle Hill Projects at three in the morning trying to find a nigga with some weed. And if you know about Castle Hill Projects, nigga, that is not the place where you wanna be. Niggas was getting murdered in Castle Hill, my nigga. 
for real, for real. That shit, they don't call that shit Castle Gray Skull for nothing, nigga. That shit, you will get killed out there. Ain't nothing out there. Ain't no trains, nothing. You gotta take the bus out that motherfucker. They don't even got a train stop. That shit is like motherfucking no man's land. And you ain't from out there. You don't have no business out there at all. We was walking around that bitch. We started meeting niggas though, and niggas started liking us eventually, pause. Know what I mean? But we was out there, bro. That little store, it's two, it's like a little store. It's two little areas, right? Two little uh. bullshit ass strip malls in Castle Hill. It's like two of the same joints. One of them is right across the street from that big ass building, and then one is down the block where they used to sell DVDs and shit like that. Son, niggas be getting murdered in that shit, son. Like it's a little 24 hour store with the window, niggas be getting slumped in that little parking lot bullshit. We used to be in that shit three in the morning trying to find weed. Like, we bugging, son. We bugging the fuck out, son. But yeah, son, right next to, you know, it's two of them, like the supermarket one, and then there's the one right next to the, to the peas where it's like a little 24-hour store. Son, them shits is dangerous, son. Them shits is dangerous, son. You over there, you if you go to the store at two in the morning in Castle Hill, it's like a 30% chance you're gonna get killed, my nigga. I'm dead ass serious. That shit like a 30% chance of getting shot and killed if you go to one of them stores in Castle Hill at two in the morning, my nigga. Real talk. Niggas be out there shooting all t hours of the night. Police is not coming nowhere near that shit, my nigga. You on your own out there. Real talk. One of my mans I was up north with, I can't even mention his name. He from out there. That nigga's a, he was a terror in Castle Hill. But I can't even mention son name because son got so much beef. It's ridiculous. You understand what I'm saying? But my man I was up north with from Castle Hill. He's a super goon. I hope son is still alive, man. That's my son. If he hit a channel, he definitely gonna reach out. But son was a super goon. I seen that nigga in Castle Hill. He was gripped up. He had two things on him. He like, son, I'm, I got two things on me right now, son. He said, I can't even stand out here for two minutes. He said, if I'm on this block for two minutes, somebody gonna come over here shooting. I was like, all right, son. I'll text you or something later. You heard? But yeah, my nigga, I done lived around this city though, God damn it. I used to live in Flatbush. I used to stay with my ex broad. She used to have a crib in Flatbush on Newkirk. Nigga, that shit was the fucking jungle. You heard? That shit was the fucking jungle. Then when she had a crib in the star, we used to stay in the star. I forgot what block we was on. We was on green and fucking green and... I know as soon as you come off the train in Kosciuszko, you just come right off the train, you walk up one block and you make a right. And then whatever block that was, that's the block she used to live on. That shit be having 10,000 niggas out there. My shit, my shit started staying with her. Within 24 hours, I was out there rhyming with them niggas. You heard? I came out there, the average nigga would have seen how many niggas was out there. There's 100 niggas out there. I ain't want to fuck with it. I'm from the Vale and all of that. I ain't trying to be fucked with a bunch of star niggas asking them niggas about weed and shit. Eventually, I went over there like this. Next thing you know, my bro had me laughing. She was like, this nigga moves here two days ago. I come home from work. I come on the block. He's standing there rapping with 20 different niggas. My shit on the block and all type of ciphers, nigga. Niggas don't know me from a can of paint. Niggas like, yo, we like this nigga, man. Where you from, son? Then I bumped into a nigga I was in Franklin with. He had the whole neighborhood under siege. You see how it's a small world? He like, yo, son, what up, son? I'm like, oh, shit, what up? I was in Franklin with the nigga. He like, son, I run this whole hood, son. Real talk. Anybody front on you, son. Tell him such and such and such and such. I said, all right, son, I see you. You hurt? Small world. Like I said, Brooklyn, my nigga. Everybody knows everybody, my nigga. I don't give a fuck where you go, what part of Brooklyn. Whoever you know out there, they related to somebody that I know, my nigga. 
They some they they somebody I know sons, nephews, cousins, brothers. Everybody's connected. Yeah, I used to I we used to be on Newkirk. There used to be two hundred niggas, and my girl my my girl was the type of chick like everybody always trying to holler at her. Like you feel what I'm saying? And she be she be curving niggas in a polite way, but. I wasn't feeling that shit, so you know what I mean? My vibes was different with niggas. I'd be like, nigga, don't be, don't smile up in my face and then you see my bitch. I'm trying to start a conversation, nigga. Fuck one of y'all niggas up out here. But nah, niggas, niggas was cool up there though. But know what I mean? I mean, my cousin South Jamaica. We used to be out there. Got some stories about South Jamaica, baby couple of good stories about South Jamaica. You know what I mean? It's another dangerous ass motherfucking hood, nigga. That I did a few stupid things in. Slim Blunt Gang, baby. You know what I mean? Roach Blunt Gang, Jail Blunt Gang, nigga. Penitentiary Blunt Gang, nigga. We in the building, you heard? Penitentiary Blunt, man. We smoking them up north blunts, man. Noel Michaels was popping. Troy White was really good. Yeah, but that new Kirk shit, Flatbush, I wasn't used to that shit either, my nigga. Be too many niggas on the block, my nigga. Come outside, be 47 niggas in front of the building. Like, come on, my nigga. That nigga's out there too deep. I used to come off the train. That long, I think that's when the D used to go there or something. Oh my god, that train ride was so fucking long. The new Kirk nigga, that shit had you be in tears taking that train ride. Nigga, I used to get off that shit, come up the block, 47 niggas on the block. You're like, come on, my nigga. Why y'all niggas gotta be 47 deep? I got a good Church Avenue story too. I'm gonna tell that. I almost told it the other day. I'm gonna tell that shit this week though, probably. Or next week. I got a good Church Avenue story. I gotta just remember the details because some of the details of it is a little foggy. But I got a story of how niggas try to take my son hat, man, on Church Avenue, man. Like 30 niggas try to rob my man for his hat. You know what I mean? I'm gonna tell that story. I'm gonna tell that story soon, man. Niggas ran down on my son for his crispy, his crispy starter fitted. You feel what I'm saying? Crispy starter hat, man. Yeah, man. Free the guys was popping. Black dollars was really good. YG TV, what up? Jonathan was populated. Nah, I ain't got no stories about Rack City. I was locked up with a couple of niggas from Left Rack, though. Shout out my nigga Mikey. My son Mikey from Left Rack. Locked up with some... I was locked up with some known niggas from Left Rack, though. Some money getting niggas from Left Rack. That's a big-ass project. That's a big-ass project, Left Rack. Queens got some big ass projects, my nigga. Terry Brennan was really good, my nigga. Noel Michaels, I see you flagging that Gen Pop. I see you flagging that Gen Pop gang in the building. I'm about to get off this shit though, cause I'm acting like I ain't gotta get up at like 5.30 in the morning and shit. I'm bugging. Over a stack, I appreciate you, my bro. Appreciate that love. Cephalo, what up? Now, Left Rack Projects is not really a project, but you know, it's a project. It's like Glenmore in the Ville, my nigga. Like, you know, Glenmore is not technically a project, but that shit is a project. Atlantic Towers is not technically a project, but you know, shit is a PJs, my nigga. 
And niggas be saying Park Chester in the Bronx is all. That shit ain't no fucking condominium, nigga. What type of condominium is that? Now, is a side of Park Chester that's beautiful, like over there by the Macy's, and they got the buildings behind the Macy's and all that. that those are nice ass buildings. And Park Chester does have some nice ass buildings. But the, to call the entire projects condominiums, that's that's a bit much, my nigga. Niggas be getting shot in Park Chester. Niggas tried to rob me in Park Chester before. I got a story about that. It ain't no real story. Niggas just tried to rob me. And literally, they was young niggas. They must have thought I was young. But this is on Christmas. You know, niggas, you got to be careful on Christmas in New York because niggas robbing heavy. I mean, one time I was in Park Chester, I come out the barbershop getting a crispy cut. You heard? I got like bags in my hand and shit because I had did Christmas shopping and shit, right? So I have bags in my hand. I have money on me, all type of shit. I'm coming. I'm, I'm on Park Chester. I come out the barbershop right there on motherfucking um at the top of the motherfucking street, I, the hill where like you know where the where the main back of Park Chester is. At. I can't remember what row. I think that it may be East Tremont. I'm not sure, but it may be East Tremont. But I was walking down that shit, right? You know, I'm from Brownsville, man, so I'm going to see a jokes from 100 miles away. You heard? So I come down the block. I see these two niggas. They down up. The, they, they're a little bit down the block. But I can just tell by their whole movements that they're looking for somebody for to rob right quick to get a couple of dollars. And they're contemplating on who it's going to be. So they communicating with their eyes back and forth. Like, when we see that nigga that we know is that nigga, we going. So they saw me and... They, they gave themselves that eye contact, like, yo, that's the nigga. So them niggas start coming through. I could just tell they was, I could just tell that how they was fidgeting and all of that. I'm like, oh, these niggas is the jokes. I said, yo, I had bags in my hand. My nigga, I was about to get on the bus. I said, yo, I know these young niggas ain't about to try to stick me up at gunpoint. You heard? Bro, I promise you, them niggas started coming towards me and I, I just stopped in the middle of the street and looked at them niggas like this. I gave them niggas the look like, nigga, I dare you. I ain't have shit on me, my nigga. I ain't have nothing. I was straight bluffing. I just was like this. I stopped and I just waited for them niggas. Son of them niggas got up to me, my bro, looked at me in my face and just turned around and went the other way real talk like they just aborted the mission like they, they got up on me they was like because they was young niggas but they both had the ratchet because they was both about to reach and all of that i just gave them niggas to look like i was like boy don't play with me that's the type of look i gave them niggas like don't play with me my niggas and them niggas was like they, they read my face and they just was like yo we out and they bounced my nigga I'm like, yo, niggas, these niggas really tried to run down on me in Park Chester, my nigga. Because it was Christmas Eve, you heard? Niggas be desperate out there on Christmas Eve. Don't be walking around with all type of bags and shit. Because, you know, that block behind Park Chester, it's a long strip. Like, that's where niggas get robbed at because it ain't nothing you could do if a nigga back you down over there. It ain't nothing. It's just desolate. It's the back of the projects. You feel what I'm saying? Behind it is just like, you know, that fence with... Whatever the fuck companies is back there, whatever, but it ain't no it ain't it ain't no life back there. So they waited for me to start walking down that block. You heard? Like they wanted me to walk down that block. You know, once you get off that main ave on Parkchester, you can't see what's going to, what's going down that block. So they was waiting for me to go down that block so they could come running around the corner. But instead of going down the block, I stopped and I just looked at them niggas like, don't play with me, niggas. And them niggas turned around and went the other way, my nigga. That's my word. I was like, Psh. I called my man. I said, son, these two niggas just tried to run down on me with ratchets and park chester, my nigga. I said, these niggas is crazy out here, my nigga. The niggas kept it moving. Word to my mother. It was just the energy. The energy made them niggas... Yeah, right across from, right, right where what's the name used to be at Uno's. That's where I spotted them niggas at. It was by Uno, you heard? And I was up by the barber shop. And I was coming the street. I just had bags in my hand and shit. I was fly, I had gold on. Know what I mean? I was doing too much. 
the niggas saw my shit, the niggas was like, they go right there. I was like, nah, not today, man. Walk down. Yeah, I was about to knock one of them teardrops off that nigga face. Whatever that nigga had, he probably got a hundred years right now, cause he was headed for a hundred years. But yeah, that that block up for Macy's, my nigga. You know that main strip on on Park Chester, just that one main strip. You know what I mean? Where the Macy's is at, and where Uno's is at, and Children's Place, and all of the all of the fucking stores and shit. Niggas be out there shopping on Christmas. It be niggas with money. You know the movie theater used to be over there. You know what I mean? Then it was that pizza shop that was right next door to the movie theater that the whole Park Chester go to for their pizza. Them niggas' pizza is blazing. That shit right next to where the movie theater used to be at. You know what I mean? But niggas be motherfucking out there and other niggas from other parts of the Bronx be coming over there to rob because they know people go over there to shop around Christmas time. And that block right there that I think is Tremont, whatever block that is though, that shit is a dangerous block to walk down. You walk, yeah, Metropolitan Avenue. That's exactly what it is. You walk down that shit, nigga, you're done. You turn that corner and walk behind those projects, and you and you ain't on point, you're done, my nigga. Nigga's gonna run down on you. See, I'm different, son. I done lived in all type of parts of New York. I done been a, I, I got I got a bit of every neighborhood in New York in my blood, my nigga. You know what I mean? That's why I be in so many different hoods because I'm a Gemini ass nigga, man. I can't sit still, so I'm always in I'm always in a various hood. You know what I mean? My son Stress used to live in Park Chester. That's why I used to be out there. You know what I mean? Shout out to my son Peter Brown too that I was up north with, my nigga Peter Brown. Son live from some from Park Chester too, if I'm not mistaken. My nigga Peter Brown. Good nigga that I was in Greenwood came from DFY. Light skinned nigga um Peter Brown with the freckles. That's my son. He from the Bronx. Gemini gang was really my fault. I don't know what's going on with this shit. Nah, I ain't never really used to shop on Fordham, but I done been on Fordham a bunch of times. Fordham too motherfucking, Fordham too crazy for me, my nigga. I'ma keep it real with you. Like, you heard? Fordham is just, Fordham is too active, my nigga. Be 10,000 motherfuckers on Fordham. Be like 14 robberies per hour on that motherfucker. But I did cop some Maury's. Remember they had the they had the Maury Gator spot on Fordham Road. I used to be running up in that spot though. I think I got some Gators from that spot before. You know what I mean? When I had the Brown Maury's, I thought I was fly. Oh, I used to fuck with what's the name too? What's that shit that used to be on Fordham Road? Um, right there on Fordham and motherfucking Jerome, I think it is. Fordham and Jerome. What's that spot? Sammy's? Was that Sammy's Fashion? I think it was Sammy's fashion. My mixtapes used to be up in that motherfucker. Remember, they used to have the mixtapes right as soon as you come up in the door. They got the mixtapes right there. I had my mixtapes up in that bitch. Sammy's fashion for facts. Word up. Yeah, for them crazy. Them niggas tore that shit up when them riots took place. That jewelry store that's right there on the corner, I think, is on Fordham and Jerome, too. Niggas tore that shit up, my nigga. Straight up. But I can't fuck with Fordham, no, my nigga. It should be too, it'd be too crazy over that motherfucker. It'd be too, too many people out there, my nigga. I filmed a video on Fordham Road, though. Put in uh, St. Laz, Hangman, Focus on the Dream. We right there on Fordham Road. We got the last footage of that pay less before that shit got closed down. Remember they used to have a big ass pay less on Fordham Road? That shit ain't there no more. I mean, Syracuse was populating. Word up. But now my mixtapes used to be in Sammy's fashion and all of that. 
You heard? Niggas just be having my mixtape in there. I used to be happy as a motherfucker. You know what I mean? Crazy. Niggas closed down same fashion. That was the most motherfucking Fordham Road. Now the only time I'll be on Fordham Road is if I gotta go to the DMV, my nigga. I went there the other day to the DMV. That shit whack. But anytime I'm in Fordham Road, shout out to my bro too. The niggas own that tattoo spot on Fordham Road. The shit with the trains in it and all of that. That shit fire. You know what I mean? That's fucked up. My memory is shot. I forgot the bro name that owns that shit, but he a good nigga. He spit. You know what I mean? We did some work before. You know what I mean? That's the bro. That tattoo shop is the, is the craziest tattoo shop in the city. That nigga shit crazy. They got the, 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 train, the, the train carts up in that bitch. That shit look wild. One time I was over there, I seen a nigga get pounded out too. One of them tattoo niggas pounded a nigga out crazy. <laughs> Nigga had put his hands on his sister, and the nigga was in the tattoo shop. He's a white boy nigga too, white boy from the Bronx. White boy nigga beat the shit out this nigga, my nigga. He like, yo, you putting your hands on my sister? Bing, bong, bing, bing, bong, bing, bing, bing. Nigga chased that nigga down the block. Nigga turned around, he's like, yo, I'm calling cops. He's like, I'm gonna press charges on you, nigga. He said, it's spicy out here. <laughs> Came here to the tattoo shop, seen they get pounded out right quick. And he threatened to rap. But nah, my nigga. I be going to them pizza shops in Little Italy, Little Italy though. Little Italy pizza, that shit be different. If you ain't never going Little, Little Italy, my nigga, listen. Son, Little Italy in the Bronx, bro, they got some food out that motherfucker, son. But they regular pizza shops, their pizza is outstanding. Like, soon as you go, um, I forgot what block that is. Wherever the, not the block with the Bronx Tail mural, the block before that. You walk down that block, it's two pizza shops right across the street from each other. Both them niggas' pizza is outstanding, my nigga. You heard? They got the real pizza in Little Italy, my nigga. I be all through there. My man used to live in Little Italy. That shit is out of control over there, too. It's all nice in Italy looking during the day, but at nighttime, niggas be getting shot over there. For real, for real. My man used to live in Little Italy. That nigga said, nigga, I got to get up out of here, my nigga. He said, I can't stay here no more. Niggas be shooting in my building. Heard Mexicans. Mexicans be fighting and shooting each other all the time in Little Italy. Poor little dog, good looking out, my nigga. Jasmine Quinones was populating. Ulysses Perez, what up? Walter Hatcher, what up? Syracuse, what's really good? I'm about to get up off this bitch, my nigga. Tomorrow, my new episode drop at 7 a.m. in the morning. You heard? Noel Michaels, that's what's up, my nigga. That's what's up. I love Brussels sprouts. I be fucking Brussels sprouts up. Forget about that shit, nigga. Saute them shits with some olive oil. Yay. It's mad Mexicans in Little Italy because they work in that motherfucker. You heard? So they be getting apartments over there. Shit be getting crazy. But my man used to live there. That nigga used to be like, nigga, this shit Little Mexico, not Little Italy. Real talk. Mexicans coming up in New York. Niggas all over. Exactly, my nigga. <laughs> exactly. Mexicans make all the pizza in New York. They're the closest thing to Italians. The niggas got the same colors, too. The same color flag. Real talk with y'all, my nigga. I hate to leave y'all niggas. I could probably with y'all niggas all night. But I got to get up at like 5.30 in the morning, man. So I'm going to holler at y'all dudes in the a.m. You know what I mean? 7 a.m.? I'ma be on motherfucking uh I'ma be on the premiere of the episode. So if y'all niggas is up at 7 a.m., I'm on there with y'all. Got an episode I filmed that shit in Harlem, you heard? So holla at me, my nigga. I mean hit me up on that Instagram, Real St. Last, hit me up on that Facebook, 
Brian St. Laz Johnston, man. Send me an email at lazbeats at gmail.com. Peace.